The TMUA is a super fast-paced maths exam, and I'm going to be showing you how you deal with that fast-pacedness. Um, I'm going to be solving this problem here, and I'm going to be showing you the tricks to save you the crucial seconds, which is going to be what separates you from being a good student to an excellent student. My name is Jamie, and I study maths at Oxford University. I did the MAT, did the TMUA, studied maths at Oxford, and now I help students all over the globe who are doing well in school maths but are struggling with, to bridge the gap into the Oxbridge admissions process and who are looking for that extra support to get them these Oxford and Cambridge uh, offers um, and eight, over 80% of the students I work with end up receiving Oxbridge offers. That's enough waffling for me. Let's have a look at this question. This is from paper two, 2016. So like the practice paper they had. Um, we want to consider this statement about a function f of x. Uh, if f of x squared, uh, f of x squared, f of x squared is less than or equal to one for all x between minus one and one, then the integral from minus one to one of f of x squared dx is less than or equal to the integral from minus one to one of f of x dx. Which one of the following functions provides a counterexample to star? This is a classic TMUA style question. Which one of the following provides a counterexample to star? These sorts of questions are really great and, to be honest, quite easy if you know what you're looking for. These, these questions, the reason they have them in the TMUA and they have them literally in every single year is because they want to see if students know what a counterexample is. A counterexample to a statement is something that adheres to the conditions of the statement but doesn't adhere to the conclusions of the statement. If that makes no sense, let's have a look at this statement. We've got an if part, this bit is the condition, and we've got a then part, that bit is the conclusion. Um, so if f is a counterexample, or for f, let me just start again, for f to be a counterexample to star, we need the following two conditions to hold. So we need it to uh, following two criteria to hold. We need f to satisfy the condition. So we need f squared to be less than or equal to 1 for all x between minus 1 and 1. Oops. And we also need this uh, conclusion to not hold. So we need the integral from minus 1 to 1 of f squared dx to be strictly bigger than the integral from minus 1 to 1 of f dx. So how am I going to do this really, really quickly? Well, I've already started my solution. So if I was doing this in the TMU, I would take the time to literally write out what it means for F to be a counterexample. Don't be lazy. Don't cut corners. You just want to be efficient. So now all I'm going to do is go through these answers one by one and check the first condition and then check the second condition. Any ones which don't meet either of those conditions, I'm just going to get rid of straight away. This is how we're going to do this. So I'm going to first look at this first condition. Also, it looks a little bit easier. We need the function to be, when I square it, to be at most one for every X between minus one and one. This actually eliminates four options. It eliminates option A, because if I substitute x is 1 into this function, I get 3 over 2. And if, of course, if I square 3 over 2, that's not less than or equal to 1. And of course, 1 is between minus 1 and 1. So that's not an option. Uh, similarly, f of x uh, for b, if I substitute x is minus 1 into this, I get minus 3 over 2. So I can get rid of that. Uh, similarly, for c and e, if I sub in x is 1, f of x will be 2. If I square that, that's bigger than 1. Amazing. I've managed to eliminate four of the five incorrect options by literally just testing one thing. That's the power of this. And that is also kind of why they design these questions, simply to test, do you know what a counterexample is? If you know what it is, you can eliminate uh, the majority of options really, really quickly. Okay, so we're left with options D and F. So now at this stage, this is a good technique that I like to uh, what's the word, employ when doing multiple choice questions, when I'm trying to do it by elimination, is once you've eliminated the majority of the uh, options and you're only left with two or three options, you want to compare and test. So now, instead of looking back to the question to eliminate the remaining two options, I'm actually going to look at the two options and I'm going to play a game of spot the difference. What are the differences between these two functions? And there aren't that many differences. I mean, F, they are different functions, obviously, but in terms of the relationship to the, the these properties here, it's not super clear. Um, it turns out that both these uh, properties satisfy the condition. I, I encourage you to check that uh, or to prove that. And there's a million different ways you can prove it. Uh, or Not a million, there's a few different ways you can prove that they sat both satisfy this condition. Um, explore a few of them. Now... I therefore need to assess this uh, second bullet point. Uh, so I want my counterexample to satisfy this. Now, the naive thing to do would be to just literally integrate f squared, integrate f for one of these functions and see if this inequality works. We can do that. But for this particular question, we can make some nice observations. Um, d here is an odd function. 
which is really nice because we're integrating over a symmetric integral interval. So I know that the integral from a minus alpha to alpha of an odd function dx is just going to equal zero. If what I've written here makes no sense to you, Google odd functions uh, and look up their properties. I'm not going to bother going into what those are. Um, so this is really useful because if we look at D, then I know straight away that this right hand side here is zero. Great. And now what about the left hand side? Well, this is perfect because I'm integrating f squared. I don't know what f squared is, but it's obviously going to be bigger than zero or bigger than or equal to zero. And if I'm integrating it, it's going to be strictly bigger than zero. And so therefore, this inequality is satisfied. And thus, my answer is D. It's the trick. So for this problem here, which is essentially a question, which of the following is a counterexample? Do this by elimination. Step one, write out the, what it means for a function to be a counterexample. So here, for a function f of x to be a counterexample to this statement, it must satisfy both these bullet points. Look at both the bullet points and decide which one is easier to assess. In this case, it was pretty clearly the first one. Um, and go through the options. There'll be some low-hanging fruit, some, e some options that's really easy to eliminate. That's how they design these questions. Um, and then by that point, like here, I could eliminate four out of five uh, of the wrong answers. So I was immediately left with a 50-50 chance. And then with a bit of further inspection, with a few little integration tricks um, to save me some extra time here, um, we can get arrive at the answer is D. So don't get me wrong, that this question, to get this question in under a minute, you have to know these tricks. And there are so many tricks to know uh, if you want to save as much time as possible in the TMEA, which given it is a very time pressured exam, if you've done a TMEA past paper before, you'll, you'll kind of know the pressure I'm talking about. Anyway, if you are someone who's looking to prepare for the TMEA and is maybe doing well in, you know, kind of the past paper is doing okay, but you're struggling to get up to that grade eight, grade nine, do get in touch. I help students who transform from being good at school math to being excellent at the TMUA in as little as 12 weeks. Uh, book a call with me. You can just have a nice little chat, very informal, and I can see if I can give you any advice uh, and help you with your journey onwards with the TMUA. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll leave a video on screen where I solve another TMUA problem, which again comes from my, um, my bank of problems. So this one is actually from a past paper. I have my own bank of problems, which I've created for my students, and we'll be going through that and going through some tips and tricks to solving that one. So I'll see you over there.